I was in Belfast on Saturday and I went into a second-hand bookstore, uh, Oxfam, there near Victoria Shopping Centre. And I saw this little booklet. It's uh, Holy Communion, Epistles and Gospels. And I was reading through it. Uh, I'll just read you something from here on, on Communion. Um, so I'll just read you something here. You are now drawn near to receive the bread of life. Jesus waits for you. Think of him present in spirit to welcome you, to feed you, to bless you. Do not take any food in your hand, but say in your heart as you leave your place. O my Jesus, I come to thee. Thou art present in the power to heal. Let me touch but the hem of thy garment and I shall be whole. Then go up quickly, do not hurry to kneel at the altar rails before there is room, nor push in so as to kneel too closely together, as that disturbs others as well as yourself. If you have to wait a little for your turn, either kneel or stand in secret prayer, and you will find time either while you're waiting or after you've knelt down at the rail for some short prayers as these which should uh, know beforehand. Lord, the, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou come under my roof, but speak only one word and thy servant shall be healed. Lord, be merciful upon me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. I will wash my hands of innocency, and so I go under thine altar. When you're waiting for bread, say in your heart, Thou hast said, The bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Behold, the servant of the Lord, be unto me according to thy word. The minister, when he gives you the bread, will say, The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto eternal life. Take and eat this in remembrance of Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. Anyway, I was just fascinated in reading this book. And uh, uh, obviously... I. It's, I realized, hold on a second, this isn't a Catholic book, this is a this is an Anglican book printed in the 1800s and it's by a a bishop, the first bishop of Wakefield, uh, Walsh, Walsham Howe. And uh, so anyway, I was just researching, you know, these curious things that come to you, researching this bishop. And seemingly this bishop died here in Mayo, where I live when I was in holidays. Go figure. You know this bishop that 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 wrote this little book, and you know even though the Anglicans have gone off more woke than anything else at the moment, you know, uh, God knows what where they'll end up in twenty thirty years time. It was interesting to see back in the eighteen hundreds, you know, that they really had they really took seriously the Eucharist, and they really took preparation for the Eucharist seriously, and then they took seriously Thanksgiving after the Eucharist, which is, you know, it's just an in interesting observation of the era um and uh, you know how things have changed uh, now nowadays there's the book even has an examination of conscience preparate holy communion preparation the best pre pre the best preparation is a holy life so live as if always ready to meet the lord <laughs> you know this is what anglican said back in the 1800s i kid you not he who lives a holy life is always ready to depart and to be with Jesus. Must he not be always ready to stay and be with Jesus in his blessed sacrament? Wow. Wow. Uh, and then they go through in a self-examination. Let a man examine himself. And it goes through all the commandments and, and the whole thing for preparing you. I mean, it's fascinating today when we grow up for communion. I find it fascinating that that people are scratching ourselves. Oh, why don't people believe where where the vocation's gone? How can we get people back into church? Um, 
it was interesting. I was looking at the installation of uh, of the new bishop in Belfast, uh, Bishop Allen. I was looking at the videos and, and, and the photos of his uh, installation last Sunday. And, you know, the church was packed, but where were the children? You know, where 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 were the families uh, from all around the Falls Road? Maybe I couldn't see them in, in, in the photos, but uh, it was just curious you know that you have a bishop coming to to belfast where are the where are the where are the families where is the next generation um you know what are we doing to engage the next generation in the faith you know because if we if we look what our lord is asking us to do he's he's asking us to go out to be missionary he's asking us to to be him in this world to go and and preach the good news and this is a challenge for us in ireland today uh, the gospel that was given two thousand years ago is the same gospel that we have to give to people today you know we're not able to reinvent a new gospel but you know this is the challenge in ireland today i think in in um in in preaching this this faith um and at the core of this you know we have to teach a generation uh, of who is present when they go to mass the depths of that spiritual encounter with christ who is present body blood soul and divinity you know we have to embody in us uh, the, the god we've we've met in the eucharist you know if if we have really met christ you know wouldn't he change everything in our life you know, there's some people that, you know, sometimes they meet a celebrity or they meet a star or they've met the queen or whoever. I don't know. And you, you hear the stories again and again and again. Oh, I met this and such and such a day at such and such an hour and shook hands. And here's the photo of it. Yeah, we meet Christ at mass. We meet Christ at mass. We meet Christ in the Eucharist. We meet him in adoration. We meet him in prayer. Does that not mean something to, to us Catholics anymore? Or is it just so, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we do. But like, oh, look, we don't have to make a big song and dance about it. It's only the Eucharist. It's only Christ. I mean, come on, like, why are you taking it so seriously, Robert? It's, it's amazing what, what people, people do think I'm a bit crazy when I, when I talk about God. He said, like... Gosh, you're you're overzealous here, you know, uh, religious crackpots and so forth. But like, he is God. Christ is present. He did reveal himself to me when I was eighteen. You know, it was and it was a an encounter of peace. And it's always been something of peace in my life. It's always been something real. He's always present in prayer in some way or form. And so if, if it's something that's nourished me for 33 years, would it not be something that will help others? I mean, that's, that's how I view it. You know, Christ's presence transforms your life. And I only wish that the church now, as it manoeuvres in its new... As Cardinal Grech says, we see the fulfilment of Second Vatican II now with the synodal process. I don't know what synodal process is going to bring you to God that hasn't been tried and tested in the last 2,000 years. You know, I don't know. I don't see it written there. I don't see it in any of the documents. I don't see how you're going to be helping people to go closer to God. If we do this and this structure and this and this way of doing it, at the end of the day, will it give us a closer union with God? I wonder. Anyway, it was just interesting, this little book that came into my hand, an Anglican bishop and, you know, the, all of the... Um, you, could, you could even say it's, it's pretty... Today, today it's pretty Catholic. You know, and I was reading through it. I was saying, and and you're judging it against it. I said, wow, they 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 really did have faith, uh, even though they weren't Catholics. No wonder you had great saints like John Henry Newman come into the Catholic Church. I mean, these men came in with 
with a lot of formation into the church. Um, but sadly, you know, we need to enkindle this generation's imagination with who is there present to transform their lives. And I'm no doubt about it that Christ can do this. But um, I'd love for people to, to take to take that journey towards Christ, you know, to go and encounter him and see what he does in their lives. Anyway, just just a video uh, about this little book. Let me know what you think in the comments. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.